Welcome back, Knife Nerds and Everyday Care People. It's your boy, the Big Connector here. And today, I want to have a look at um, uh, an issue here that is, uh, you know, comes up in the knife community quite a bit. And I'm just kind of hoping if you're new to uh, knife collecting and new to knives, this gives you a good basic understanding of uh, what you're getting into when you pick up uh, a knife with a certain type of lock. Now these are not uh, the end all and be all of all the uh, locks because there are some locks that are not here. A, I don't have the knife and uh, B, um, they're just maybe not as popular. But so these seem to be your most popular uh, locks in all your knives. And I just kind of want to go over them, maybe give a little bit of kind of pros and cons, what they're about, how they work. Um, and uh, let's just say it right off the bat. The triad lock is, I believe, the strongest locking mechanism out there in a knife, but that does not mean it is the best locking mechanism. Uh, I mean, uh, it's an ingenious uh, locking system, but it is, I don't think it, it's the best. And I mean, I, I think the best locking mechanism is the one that works for you consistently and does the job because, I mean, you can take this knife and you can set it in the the, you know the cold steel lock testing jig and bash the hell out of it and it'll you know it'll come out where you've got something like this liner lock will fail but I mean this liner lock if it does the job for me consistently and I like uh, because it's not just strength is the only thing about a lock I mean it's flickability I mean fidget factor that's a huge thing in locks um, uh, opening and closing it consistently uh, without you know damaging yourself because there are some locks out there that are so stiff that uh, it's a pain in the butt to open them but you know we'll uh, we'll get to that now the first thing I want to mention is um, no lock uh, this is your slip joint uh, knife or you don't really have a locking mechanism I guess, suppose there is one a little bit here it's more of a spring than it is an actual like locking system. So if there is some uh, pressure on it that you can actually do before it actually closed. And this one has a half stop. You see that? If that would have been sprung all the way closed, I could have caught my thumb. Oh, dangerous. Dangerous, Mr. Knucker. So this one is simply a spring um, that is over top of a, a ramp is, is basically all this is. And as you can see, when you start to close it, you see the spring lifts up a little bit. And uh, it is very similar to, say, the the uh, the back lock or the mid back lock. But um, all this is is just simply a knuckle with a spring that goes over top. And as it opens, the knuckle kind of opens and then it drops down. And that's all it is. There's just a simply kind of a bump in the uh, pivot of the uh, lock. So that gives you an idea of that one. And I mean, this does have its place uh, because a lot of places, uh, you know, especially the UK, England, they will not allow you to have a locking knife. Um, so therefore you need to everyday carry a non-locking knife. And if you've got a really, really tough spring like these GECs are, um, when you go to pierce something, um, you'll have a less of a chance to, um, to uh, you know, close something you know, on, your, on your fingers. Um, if you're cutting something with the positive pressure, no, no problem whatsoever. It doesn't matter. These liner, these uh, spring lock knives, you can press and cut until your heart's content. It's only when you put negative pressure on the blade, uh, which which is that. So you've got positive pressure, negative pressure, and that's uh, where you're going to close this is using your negative pressure. Okay, so let's close that up. So now the next one here is, and these are in kind of no particular order. This one here is called a liner lock. And the reason they call it a liner lock is they've basically got an inside liner is the locking mechanism here. As you can see here, um, it uh, the blade will open and the lock will travel over and stop it. Therefore, you've got your negative pressure covered and you're completely locked. Now, it is a simple, um, easy locking mechanism that uh, doesn't require a lot of machining and a, uh, a lot of moving parts. But the big thing about this, I'd say the big con about this is that it's on the weaker side of 
uh, of your knife. Now, I've never had a liner lock uh, fail on me. Um, I'm sure there are definite horror stories out there. There are people who have lost fingers from liner locks failing. There are people who have had some bad cuts. I just haven't had one yet. Um, I think a part of this, no matter what lock you're using, is just being sensible. I mean, if I take this knife and I stab it into something, you know, the, the, you know, it, chances are it's not going to move. But if I take that knife, stab it, and I press down on it, I'm sure that I could make this knife fail. And you know what? I'm also sure that even stabbing into a knife sometimes will make these fail. You know, you get some gas station knives out there. I don't know if I would trust my fingers to a gas station knife logging uh, a, a liner lock in a um, uh, in a gas station knife uh, in a hard use uh, application. Now, this was invented by a gentleman by the name of Michael Walker. You'll sometimes be heard it being called the Micro Walker liner lock. So that just gives you an idea of what this uh, liner lock is all about. Simple, easy, not the strongest one out there, but practical and uh, inexpensive to build. Now, the next one here is you could look at, there's a couple of other um, locks that would fall into this category, the namely being the uh, access lock, but this one here is called the ball bearing lock. Now you certainly can't see the ball bearing that's inside there, but I will kind of maybe draw your picture. And this happens to be the Spyderco Manix 2 XL. I really, really like this lock. Um, you know, the positives are, I think it's an extremely strong lock. It's extremely smooth because there is a ball bearing in there. And the other nice thing is it's ambidextrous, where you can use your left or your right, where something like this uh, liner lock is traditionally used on a right-handed. So I forgot to say that. That's kind of a con. So it's, it's right-handed. I mean, there are left-handed ways you could close this, uh, but I don't think they're the safest way. Where this one here, you can use either hand to close this uh, lock. And um, what I will do here is draw you a little picture here. And um, I do please apologize for my artistic abilities because it is not very good. All right, so basically what you do is you've got your, your knife blade here, right here. And then you've got um, your lock, your pivot back here. And you've got a little bit of a channel like that. And so here is a round ball um, and there's just a little cage there and then you've got this part here with a spring behind it so this will is more rounded actually uh, so if you can imagine that um, when this is opening as you can see inside there you'll come to that little hollow and then your uh, ball bearing gets pressed inside there. And it basically <clears throat> will stop anything from moving there. So, ball bearing lock. Uh, I think it's a fantastic lock. It's fun, it's smooth. You do have lots of fun flicking this back and forth. Uh, one of the knocks on this is that there is, you know, some moving parts. Um, the cage on here is made of plastic, not metal. So it holds the ball bearing in there as well as the little <clears throat> spring part here. This little, there's a little rod there. That's actually, the whole thing is made of a polymer material. I have yet to have anybody tell me that they've broken this spring or this, this polymer um, here as well. Uh, nobody's ever told me that they've broken it. Maybe there has been somebody who's broken it, but I think if it was made of metal, it might uh, last, uh, you know, a lot of years, give people a little bit more, um, uh, a little more faith in the lock. But hey, if you've had one, if you've had one fail on you, please, please let me know in the bottom. But as far as I know, they've never, they've never had to, to fail. So uh, positive is it's ambidextrous. It's very smooth, it's very strong, it's fun to use, and the negatives is it's perhaps made of polymer, possible negative, and the fact that in this particular uh, iteration, it's it takes it's a long break-in period. You have to really, you know, grab it by two fingers here, and at least in this particular application, maybe in the Manix 2, the smaller one, uh, it may be a little bit better, and I certainly know in the access lock version of this, because there is a, a very similar lock called the access lock, 
Uh, it's a little bit of a barrel with Omega Springs. Um, that one you can just grab with just say your thumb and close where this one you can too but it takes a it took a long time for it to get there and b it is a little bit uh, hard on the fingers to do it that way so I usually like to grab with both hands with both fingers to close this particular lock so, um, so there is that <clears throat> okay so now the uh, next lock here is the compression lock which is a really really fun lock. Uh, this is probably one of the highest fidget factor locks on the, of the entire bunch. Um, I know so many people who love flicking their compression locks. And, and basically what a compression lock is, is a reverse um, liner lock. So rather than having the liner lock this way, where it uh, hits the bottom, with the compression lock, the liner lock comes out through the top. As you can see here, this will open up. There, you can see that where the liner lock is up top. It's a little bit shorter. Uh, there also is, the way this is designed with the um, this little pin here too as well, it seems to be quite a bit stronger than just your liner lock. Um, so uh, I'm a terrible, terrible uh, drawer. So this one here seems to be um, the most fun fidget factor uh, lock besides perhaps maybe the axis lock a lot of people really like the axis lock you know this is fidgety but the axis lock is more fidgety than the ball bearing lock and i think king fidget for locking right now is the uh, compression lock here in the uh, any of the spider co models and this is uh, seems to be more of a, a spider co um uh, uh, branded lock. It seems to be the one that is in their product the most. I have not seen a compression lock in another make. You never know. There may be one out there. Um, if there is, let me know. Um, but for now, I know it just seems to be a kind of a Spyderco exclusive. So I guess one of the other benefits of this lock is the fact that when you close it, your fingers aren't in the way of the blade path. So you can actually close it here. Um, I guess some of the cons are it is not as ambidextrous as some of the other locks here. I mean, you can close it here if you're left-handed. You just happens to be use your thumb rather than your forefinger here. That seems to be the way to do that. And uh, the other thing is it may not be as strong as some of the other locks, but still extremely strong, not heard of one failing. I know that they will fail because nothing is indestructible, but I would definitely bet my fingers on a compression lock from Spyderco. Really, really tough. And uh, I think one of the funnest locks that are out there right now. So next lock here. This is called a Reeves Integral Lock because it was invented by Chris Reeves. Um, it is very similar to the liner lock other than the liner lock just uses a piece of inside liner where your frame lock uses a portion of your frame to lock onto the uh, the knife blade. So as you can see here, it just simply travels over. All right, so now you've got, this is an extremely strong lock too as well because you've got quite a bit of uh, material here um, behind your uh, knife blade. Um, but I guess the other thing, I mean the pros and the cons here, one of the cons is when you close it, your actual fingers are in the path of the blade so you can perhaps get cut um, the other thing is most of the time when you're using something um, a frame lock lots of times your frame material is made of titanium and when you've got titanium hitting the steel you can develop something called a um, <clears throat> lock stick where there's some micro galling on the back of the blade because you have two dissimilar types of metal your titanium is softer than your steel and when you close it it um, it almost like it freezes to uh, the uh, uh, steel. So a lot of times you can see here, people will put little tiny pieces of steel here on the inside to prevent that too as well. And I guess another um, con of this is the fact that because this is a frame lock, it can suffer from, um, I guess, uh, over travel. So if you press this too far out this way, you can perhaps bend that or then you do not have that positive spring on the inside and you either have to take it apart and maybe bend it back in. If you've got an integral knife, which there is no, um, 
uh, two scales. There's one complete piece. If you bend that, boy, you're hooped. It's awfully tough to try to take that and bend it back in when you cannot. Um, you've only got a certain amount of of uh, travel here. So uh, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll put on the inside there, they'll put an over travel stop, which means you can only go so far and that uh, will prevent that from happening. All right, so really, really like this lock, strong lock. Um, it does have some nice fidget factor too as well. Um, it's very simple to use, although, you know, not as ambidextrous as uh, your other locks, still more for the right-handed people. My wife is left-handed and um, she would uh, uh, probably prefer something like this. I would say axis lock, eh, just uh, or maybe even a back lock. All right, so now the next lock here. Uh, oh, I forgot one of the cons on this, speaking of wives. <clears throat> the flick factor is so high in this compression lock, I know that I pissed my wife off hugely by uh, flicking this knife incessantly. And I tell you, even now to this day, if I'm upstairs in my office and my door's open and I'm flicking my knives, she will holler at me and tell me, stop flicking your knives. Um, I don't know why. I think she's afraid that I'm going to cut off a finger or something. Or just the fact that the clack bugs the crap out of her. <clears throat> All right. <sighs> Let's go next here. We've got the lock back. And this one here happens to be a mid lock back. Some examples of this back lock here. We've got the spider coat. Um, a lot of their uh, Spydercos here, especially their FRN models, have got the mid-back lock. Uh, you've got, a, uh, say, a buck. The, the buck models have got a complete back lock where it's way back here. And Spyderco decided to go with this little bit of a mid-lock because it's it's a smaller distance. Um, just, you know, the other thing, I think I think the mid-back mid lock has got less material here. It's got a little spring here, and it's... Um, I think a little bit stronger than this, the straight all, all the way back lock. There's less there to fail. So now how this lock works here is quite ingenious too as well. So that opens up. Now, you know, please, please uh, forgive my drawing because I am a terrible, terrible drawer. All right. So we've got your, uh, your blade here, your blade like that, right? And um, it'll go down and it will have a little channel here like this, right? Okay. And then that'll go like that. And then see, there's the pivot here. So this little back lock will put a square in there like this. There. So as the knife travels along here, it'll... This spring will come up, as you can see here, and then you'll see it drop down. And then it drops down in there. And now it will prevent this from, uh, it'll lock in right here. So, really, really ingenious lock, really, really tough lock, um, but you know, has its pros and cons too as well. Not high, super high in the fidget factor um, with this knife. Lots of times, if you're gonna one hand this, a lot of people will, put a, or some makers will put a, uh, if the blade drops, your finger will be on this choil. Um, if that choil is not there, or you've got your finger too far back, the knife can, you know, can hit you if you're trying to one hand close it. It is possible to one hand close a lot of times people, but your fingers are completely in the way all the time. Um, the other thing too, as well, with this particular design, in Spider Co. and uh, some of the models is as they're opening closing quite a bit you'll actually start to wear away your material it, it does have a little bit of a wear factor too as well and as it starts to get worn a little bit there's no um, some of these locks have got things built in sorry I'm off, off topic here a little bit here a little bit more of a tangent so as this steel or titanium starts to wear this particular lock bar here this the steel on this blade is at a little bit of an angle okay so as this starts to wear, this uh, lock bar starts to travel uh, this way towards the liner. It will self-adjust itself um, and create no sort of up and down motion whatsoever. Unfortunately, with the you know the back locks here, once this starts to wear, you will you could start to experience kind of an up and down blade play. 
on all your spider codes with your FRN and your mid back lock. They seem to be, that seems to be one of the failings of it. And even right brand new, because this is a little bit of a, this has got a little bit of a wiggle to it, you will feel an ever so slight up and down play. Not enough to really notice, especially when you're cutting this way, it's not sloppy at all. It's just when you grab the blade and you really reef on it back and forth, there is a little bit of wiggle to it. Um, <clears throat> but as it wears more, it can become more pronounced. So I use my backlock knives to work a lot. I don't flick them in and out incessantly. I don't know how long it will take for something like this to wear out, but it uh, it will wear out and it will create blade play. So in order to prevent that, I seem to not open my black locks as much as my other blades too as well. All right, so now coming to the triad lock. Uh, very similar to the, um, to the uh, mid back lock, um, but they add a, a few things in there. All right, so let's... Um, <clears throat> Let us uh, go over the uh, triad lock and I will try to draw one for you and kind of explain what the dealio is. All right, so <clears throat> let's try this again here. Okay, so we've got the triad lock, we've got the blade, yada, yada, yada. All right, and so you've got here, and then you've got uh, here, like that, and then like that, and there's your pin. So, now what's the difference here between this back lock and this triad lock is they add a stop pin right here. And then, you've, of course, you've got this here, and this is your triad part that goes down to your... Uh, lock bar so when you press down that lifts up so <clears throat> what that does is it allows you to have this um triad lock um, i'm just trying to figure out how to explain this it this stop pin here compresses so when you've got negative pressure here and it goes to uh push down this of course will rotate this way and so when it does rotate this way a lot of times these locks here will jump out that's you know that's what's going to happen it's either going to crack or it's going to jump out well because you've added this stop pin there basically what this stop pin does is it compresses this back lock um this triad lock here between this point and this point and it basically wedges it in there so it adds an extra pivot point there to lock um so the other thing too as well is each one of these areas here and here have got chamfers so when this here this locks if you're to basically blow this area up you'd have your stop pin this little back lock part has got a chamfer in it too like that so it sits against so as this wears it will actually there's a ramp there too as well so this is one of the few back lock things that will not have up and down play. And also as it opens more and more, it will self adjust itself. So you never really feel that up and down play. This was designed by a fellow by the name of Andrew Demko. And uh, it's, a, it's a genius lock. Uh, there's no doubt about it, but it is also very, there's a lot of moving parts to this lock. It is prone to dirt getting in there too, as well. So it's not, the smoothest lock and it, it is the fidget factor is not very high with this as you can see if this little area here there's your non flattened part if you don't have your finger right up against this little trail area when you go to one hand and close this um, if your fingers back a little bit you're getting cut you have to have your finger right up so you have to know your knife <clears throat> this is um, not my favorite lock um, it is I, undoubtedly I do believe it's the strongest lock it's the lock that I would probably take with me on a deserted island if I had one knife and it had to be a folding knife I would take this lock because it seems to be the strongest one you know when you're you know batoning and you're doing some crazy things you're not really should be doing them with a folding knife but I would use that knife 
but sitting on the couch having the most fun i love the compression lock and i love a flipper with a frame lock they are fun 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 and you know that's the most important thing i, I think when you're talking about a knife and you're talking about a lock um I, uh, strength is important yes but in well, how I'm going to use these knives most of the time, I don't need to have the strongest lock out there. Um, I want to enjoy uh, my particular knife. And um, <clears throat> I have a lot of enjoyment dealing with flippers and frame locks and compression locks of any sort. Those seem to be my two favorite. Now, I do don't mind this. This is pretty flicky too as well. Um, just, you know what? You, you got to have some fun. Now, on the majority of these locks, they all kind of, you know, have their break-in period too as well. This lock here in particular is um, a lock that needs to be broken in quite a bit. This little spring in the back will um, eventually compress a little bit and make it a little bit easier. Some of the tricks of the trade are if you uh, want to, um, see, lessen up this spring a little bit, as you basically put your knife away where the spring is in the compressed state and let it sit like that. And the other thing is just opening and closing it for a lot of times will eventually loosen that spring up a little bit and make the knife a little bit more enjoyable. <clears throat> um, keeping everything cleaned and well lubed is another way that you're gonna get the best out of all your locks because you know you get some pocket lint in this knife and all of a sudden it fails and cuts your fingers off. Not a very fun thing. So. Have fun out there. Please stay safe. This is my two cents on the locks. Oh, yes. There, so there is some locks out there that, um, uh, you know, I didn't mention uh, because I didn't have them here. There's the hawk lock. There's the arc lock. There's a power lock. There's a button lock. And there's a collar lock. So, I mean, the collar lock is your open L. And um, I should have brought my open L up, but I could have showed you that one. But no big deal. All right. Thanks for stopping by. If you like what you heard, please, please give me the thumbs up and give me the subscription. Uh, help me spread my voice. I appreciate it so much. Now, please, please stay safe out there. Listen to the experts. Keep your stick on the ice, the shiny side up. This is the Big Knucker saying adios.